All right, now we've gotten all the information and the question from the problem. We've written them down. Remember that step five is to choose a kinematics equation. And when are we ready to choose a kinematics equation? Recall that we're ready when we know three of the numbers. When we know three numbers, we can choose an equation. Well, we do know three numbers, time, acceleration, and initial velocity. We know three numbers so we can pick an equation. Of course, when you're working with uh, vertical projectile motion, you always start with one number in the bag. As soon as you know that it's vertical projectile motion, you automatically know the acceleration number. So the problem only has to give us two more numbers um, in order for us to be able to get an equation. Here, one of the numbers was kind of hidden. The hidden information that we were starting from rest, zero meters per second. Keep reading until you get all the hidden information. The variable that we're pretty much ignoring here is the final velocity. So we want to pick the equation that's missing the final velocity. It shouldn't be that hard to go through our cheat sheet or our memory to figure out which equation is missing the final velocity. Here's the equation that's missing the final velocity. Now we can plug in. What should we plug in for the displacement? Well, the displacement is what we don't know, so we don't plug in anything for that. That's delta y. Let's put some parentheses in so we can plug in the initial velocity. That becomes a zero. Uh, then our time is five, one half. Put in parentheses to plug in the acceleration, and that will be positive 9.8. Let's stop for a second and think about that. Positive 9.8. As you saw in the previous series of videos, I strongly encourage you, when you plug in numbers, to plug in the number and the sign. Indicate the sign even if the number is positive. It's really important to get in this habit so we're always conscious of the signs. And I encourage you to plug those numbers in in parentheses so that the sign um, can be separated from the other numbers. That should be a habit that's already getting pretty automatic for you. Um, now, even though we're going to try to be a little bit more conscious of units in these videos, we're still not going to plug the units into the equations when we're solving. We're still not going to be plugging the units into the equations. You can see I'm not doing that. Um, as long as all of your units are standard units, it's not strictly necessary to plug them into the equation. Um, now, as I mentioned a little bit before, I feel a little bit guilty about this because actually, um, in some ways, there are some advantages of plugging the units into the equation. Um, if your math skills are strong, I actually kind of encourage you to try plugging in with the units. If your math skills are strong, you might try doing some of these problems where you do plug in the units. Uh, but if your math skills are weak, you're probably just going to confuse yourself if you try to plug in the units at the same time that you solve the problem. Um, so to try, uh, in the interest of clarity, to um, keep the confusion um, as low as possible, I'm not going to actually be plugging in the units um, on the board. But if you want to try solving some of these problems by plugging in the units, uh, be my guest. Uh, but if you find yourself getting confused by that, you might want to um, go back to the way that I'm doing it on the board. Uh, remember that it's safe to not plug the units into the equation as long as all of the initial units were in standard unit form. Now our time is 5. As I just mentioned, I'm not going to plug in the units. And here's the one case where we don't have to indicate the sign. Times are always positive, so it would be pointless to indicate that this was plus 5. This term drops out because of the 0. Uh, now we can get our calculator to help us with the calculations. Uh, 1 half times 9.8 is 4.9. And it looks like I forgot to put the square here. Huh, that's definitely going to mess us up, so let's go back. It's very important to see that the time here is supposed to be squared. Well, 5 squared is 25. Once you start doing your calculations and simplifying, you don't have to keep showing, showing the signs. So I'm not going to keep indicating everything that's positive here anymore. You only have to show the signs when you initially plug in and when you write your final answer. Again, with our calculator, we can do 4.9 times 25. That turns out to be 122.5. Delta y equals 122.5. This is not an acceptable final answer. Because this is the final answer, now we have to show the units. Well, we can be confident that those will come out to be the standard units because we started with standard units. 
things. And because this is the final answer, now we should, we must really indicate the sign again. Well, mathematically, this number came out to be positive. So we should indicate that explicitly with a positive sign. And we should also think about whether that makes sense. Did we expect the displacement to come out positive? Well, we're moving downwards, and we chose downwards to be the positive direction. Since we're moving downwards, and we chose downwards to be the positive direction, the displacement really better come out to be positive. If the displacement had come out to be negative, we would have known we made a mistake. And we'd have to go back and find our mistake. So the answer here um, is that our displacement was positive 122.5 meters. By the way, notice that this answer is useless unless you also tell the, um, the, the reader what your positive direction is. It doesn't do the reader any good to tell them that the displacement is positive 122.5 meters if you don't tell them, by the way, I chose down to be the positive direction. So this is just one more reason why whenever you're solving a problem, you shouldn't just choose the positive direction in your head. You should write down the positive direction. That helps you when you're solving the problem, and also that helps whoever is looking at the problem afterwards to interpret it. Someone can look at this and say, oh, displacement, positive 122.5 meters. Oh, I see this person chose down as their positive direction, so I know that the displacement is downward. Um, if you don't tell somebody what your positive direction is, then it's meaningless to tell them what the sign is, because they don't know which direction is positive. <clears throat> a couple other points I want to make here. Um, something that um, I maybe should have emphasized before is um, if you're having difficulty with this material, don't skip steps. Uh, for example, um, a lot of people might try to go straight to this step. They might not actually explicitly write this equation down. They might not write this equation down. They might just think about this in their head and start plugging in. Uh, but for a beginning student who's having difficulty with the material, I strongly recommend that you start by writing the general equation. Don't start plugging in until you've already written down the general equation. It turns out that this can save, um, save you from a lot of mistakes, not just in kinematics, but in the later aspects of physics as well. So again, I'm intending these uh, videos for people who find the material difficult. Uh, if you find this material difficult, if you're liable to make mistakes, um, start by writing down the general equation and then plug in. Don't just plug in um, until you've already written down the general equation. That can help us to avoid many of the common mistakes. Remember that we're doing this maybe a little bit differently than you might see in your textbook. In your textbook, they might use this equation. In your textbook, they might just use this equation. Uh, they might not show that they're specifically focusing on the y component of the velocity, but I think it's a little bit better that we're doing that. Um, and um, they might have specifically plugged in g for the acceleration and a negative sign. Uh, again, um, I think that maybe it's a little bit better to do it the way we are. Uh, remember that if you did it this way, you would be forced to choose up as your positive direction. If you were going to use this equation, you would have already assumed that you're choosing up as the positive direction. I think this way is a little bit better, to just use the general kinematics of equations that we already learned in the previous series of videos. Um, so even though your textbook might use this equation, I'm going to encourage you to instead just use the general kinematics equations that, we, that we've already seen. So we're not going to... Um, show explicitly how to solve the question with this equation. We're not going to do it this way. Instead, we're going to use our general kinematics equations. Um, and sometimes we'll choose up as our positive direction, but if we choose down as our positive direction, then the acceleration will be positive, 9.8. And we're going to um, try not to actually use the symbol g too much, because that can be a little bit confusing. Instead of using g, we're just going to write down the number, 9.8, and then indicate what the sign is. This was a very easy problem, but the purpose was not just to get it right, remember, but the purpose was to see how we could use our systematic five-step approach for um, vertical projectile motion problems. So even if you got this problem right, I would still encourage you to go back and redo the problem if you didn't do it systematically, using the type of notation that we've seen here. Keep redoing this problem until you can not only get it right, but so that you can get it right using the same approach. Path, positive direction, kinematics variables, equation, plug in and solve. Try to use a systematic, a systematic approach that will help you on harder problems as well. <clears throat>